Hi, yeah. My name's Alan. Um, I'm going to show you my kit that um, I used recently on a walk across the Pyrenees on the GR10, 950 kilometres. And uh, you may remember I did a, a review of my kit last year. Some of you might remember. And uh, I've updated quite a bit of my kit since then to make it lighter. This will be what I'll be pulling apart. This is my pack, uh, which, as you see it there, with everything on it weighs 8.6 kilos without water, without food and without gas. And first of all I'll show you some of the stuff I was wearing. Um, these are Salomon Quest boots and uh, they're very light. I think it's about 1.2 kilos for the, for the pair of them but uh, they're pretty light boots. Very comfortable, Gore-Tex, very waterproof. They only let water in once and that was after two days of continuous rain and walking through grass and stuff. And it's the rubbing of the grass that makes the uh, things start to leak. But they were brilliant, really comfortable. I didn't have a single blister, but I did wear two pairs of socks. I always wear merino liner socks. These are actually a, a merino mix, I think. They're, um, these ones are from Alpkit, Alpkit liner socks, brilliant. Very comfortable. And over the top, um, a pair of uh, Bridgedales. These are medium uh, Trek, I think they are, socks. Very comfortable. Again, merino. So they don't smell, so pretty good stuff. It's quite warm over in the Pyrenees, so most of the time I was wearing uh, this Rab t shirt. Brilliant. That's the Rab Force. Love that. It's nice material. It soaks up sweat quite well and it dries, and it's, I think it's polygene as well, so it doesn't smell. These are Columbia shorts. Very comfortable, very, very light, about 150 grams I think now, and um, belt included, very good. Uh, pants I wore a Rowan, they were, they're very good. Um, again, I think they've got polygene in them, but they're um, a polyester mix. The hat I was wearing, I usually wear a, a Tilly hat, uh, and I have the Airflow one. But to, to be honest, they sweat an awful lot around the rim if you're in hot conditions. Um, this Trek makes one. It's really comfortable. Looks a bit more silly. It's not quite as stylish as the uh, Tilly. But it's nice and cool and breathable. It's got a little pocket here you can open and let a bit more air in. Um, and it's got a neck strap. But that was brilliant. I loved that. And it's easy to just screw up and throw in a pocket or under a strap or something. Love that. Um, and I had these bits from Trek Light. It's a little wallet, fantastic, made of Cuban fibre, very, very light. And uh, a little zip purse, which again, is very, very light, brilliant. So let's get on to what's in the pack. Uh, blast rucksack. Um, I've already uh, done a review online of my thoughts on that. Um, and I did some modifications, which I've discussed in that, that review. Um, they worked quite well. What I did find was this adjuster system keeps slipping, despite what I did with it, um, and so it doesn't work very well. What I've done since I came back is I've actually sewn the position I want it in so it's fixed, and it, the adjusters can't slide at all now. This is a Renogy 5 watt solar charger. Um, and it worked well for me uh, when I did the Beacons Way uh, earlier in the year. But it gave up on me as soon as I had hot weather in, uh, in the Pyrenees. We had a, a heat wave, it was 38 degrees. Too hot for walking really. But this thing, being black, it just absorbed the heat, it overheated. Um, and ever since then it's, all it's ever given me is a trickle charge. Uh, not very much at all. So I'm not very impressed with that. <laughs> As a solar charger. If you've got sun, you want it to work. So that's going inside the pack. The, pack, the uh, arc blast opens like that. And inside is my tent. This is a Z-Pax Plexamid tent. Very, very light. It's about four, 470 grams, something like that. Plus pigs, which are in there. Um, very good tent, packs up small, fits neatly in the pack. Um, I'm going to do a separate review on that, uh, but that worked very well for me. Um, towel, <laughs> uh, 
I just leave this loose. I don't bother putting everything in its own little bag that they come with. Very light. It's 90 something grams, I think, this one. But, um, the thing I found with this is it works very, very well. It's light and, and it either spends its time just thrown in the pack or hanging on the back. But every time I washed it, it smelt. It still smelt. Um, so I didn't like it. It's not really nice having a towel that you then use again and it makes you smelly. So um, that's going. I'm going to choose a different one for next time. This is my guide that I took, the GR10 guide. Um, some people say they just keep it on their phone. It's hard to read on the phone, it's hard to use when you're on the trail. Uh, and this has got good maps in, it's quite nice to have the pictures and stuff. Um, I used the guide, I took it, it's 380 grams, so that, that was included in that 8.6 kilos I was telling you about. But good guide, very good guide, this is room. My clothes bag. I'll show you the clothes I took. This bag is actually a Z-Pax um, large, I think they call this one, uh, the Cuban fiber bag. In there, uh, just a bit of um, uh, duct tape rolled up on a bit of cardboard, just in case anything broke, and I did use that on a couple of things. I used it for sealing a hole in the rucksack where the uh, where this flap comes in for the hydro hydration system, it actually forms a channel there and all the water runs in the hydration things. Otherwise the pack is waterproof, it's brilliant. But it's just a little bit of water crept in there. So I put some um, duct tape on the inside to seal it. Packet tissues, what have I got in here? This is uh, I can't remember the name of the model of this now. This is my jacket, the wrap jacket. And it's uh, a shell jacket, just the shell. Very, very nice. Uh, great for keeping the wind out and keeping you that, that bit warmer. I would wear that in the evenings, mostly. Or if it got a bit chilly and windy. <coughs> this is another wrap um, fleecy top. There's three different models of fleece that they do. I can't remember the name but it's the smooth one and it hasn't got the diamond um, fleece inside. But, um, and I wanted this one because the ones that have got the diamond fleece inside have a thinner outer on and they can, they can be a bit breezy so I didn't particularly want that. I wanted something that was going to be warm if I just wore it on its own. Uh, and that was good. These are my Alp kit they're actually walking tights. I did try using these. It was just too hot to wear those, so I just wore shorts nearly all the time after that. Um, but I did use these for sleeping, um, and I wore them in the evenings. Um, they're poly jeans, so they don't smell, um, and they kept me warm in the evenings, so they were good. I'd put them on when I got to camp, and I'd probably keep them on for the, the first mile or so of the trail until it warms up, and then. Uh, Change to shorts. I took this with me. Um, I probably wouldn't bother with, with this another time, but uh, it's actually a merino polo shirt, and, and I took that with me because I wanted something that, when I'd finished walking at the end of the day, going to a hotel or refuge or something like that, it's nice to just be able to just put something on that's not smelly, that's clean, because all the other stuff I had was wet and sweaty and what have you from a hot walking day. So. It's just nice to have something to throw on. This again is a, a rab. This is a rab pulse long sleeve shirt with a half zip with a neck on it as well, polo type neck. And that was good. That was great for when it was raining and warm. Um, and I wanted to wear it underneath a um, my rain jacket. Um, that just gave that little bit of um, insulation between you and the jacket. Um, and again, poly jean doesn't smell. Very versatile. All this stuff together was very versatile. And a spare pair of Rowan pants. A spare pair of these are Rowan walking socks, outer socks. Uh, they're very light, a um, little bit less bulk than the other ones I had, the Bridgedales. Um, and I, I did wear these. I wore both pairs alternately, but particularly these on hot in hot 
damp weather because uh, they let my feet breathe a bit more. Another pair of the Outkit liner socks. Um, I took a costume with me and I'm glad I did. Some people skinny dip. Um, but there are times when I wouldn't have wanted a skinny dip. There were just young families and that about by lakes and places. Uh, and also there were uh, a couple of times I swam in swimming pools and you have to have shorts, swimming shorts in a swimming pool. They won't let you swim otherwise. The other thing I took with me was a buff. I didn't use it. <laughs> didn't use it all the time I was there. But then if I'd had particularly cold, bad, windy weather, it might have been useful. But I didn't. So that's that bag, which weighs about 20 grams, very light. This is my food bag. It's the same size bag as that, um, again from Z-Pax. Um, but very light. All that's in there at the moment is some bubble wrap. Um, but that was the heaviest item I was carrying. Sometimes that would carry, that would be about three kilos worth of stuff in there because I didn't want to run out of food. Uh, and there are places where you don't know for sure if the shops are going to be open, um, which is a, a pain over there. Um, and also you get to a camp and you might find that the, the restaurants or whatever are closed and you want to eat your own food. So I made sure I had plenty of food. After, I nearly ran out one day um, and I didn't want to do it after that. So I made sure I had plenty of food. Plate. This was a cheeky plate. Four for a quid they were and go outdoors. So light, but it's brilliant. It's good size. Just slides down the front of the pack. Um, no space. 50 grams. Um, and I can cut cheese, saucisson, bread. And it gives you a nice clean area when you're somewhere that's mucky. You just want to be able to put your food down and prepare, prepare your lunch or whatever. What else is in here? This is my jacket. I've got a down jacket for when it was cold and I wore this a few times, a couple of times at night when it got down to almost freezing. It can get below freezing. I, I went um, the July, July to uh, end of August. I had this OEX jacket from um, Go Outdoors. Some people complain about these jackets because they lose some feathers and, and I must say a few little bits come out, you might see a few bits flying there. It's very light, it's 217 grams, um, it's got hydrophobic down in it, incredibly light out there, it's not actually Pertex, but it keeps the wind out, really comfortable, really warm, it can save your life, uh, and that cost me I think about 80 quid, so you can't complain about a down jacket for 80 quid, and it worked well. First aid kit, I won't go through that in detail, but yeah, there's everything from from tick stuff to um, plasters, uh, what else is in there? Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Paracetamol, ibuprofen, just in case. That hardly got used. I don't you know, I used it for a couple of things, times, for a couple of things. Uh, one guy I was walking with said he'd got had about three or four ticks, um, and this was about halfway through the walk. I didn't have any, so it's just whether you're lucky or whether you're prone to getting them. I get bitten by flies, but I don't get ticks. Um, this is my map pack. I had two two packs. This is just a, a resealable um, pack here. I can't remember who makes it. Um, and I just kept all my maps. I printed all my maps and took them with me. It's probably about 250 grams worth there. Um, but they're all printed, numbered each side. Um, so I can swap them over and see exactly where I am with the route printed on. And these came from the FFRP guides. Uh, I copied, I bought the guides and I copied the maps out of it and enlarged them. The FFRP guides weigh about 230 grams each, uh, and there's four of them for the GR10. So uh, I thought, well, I'll just take the maps uh, and the um, English guide. They're all in French. The FFRP guides. Right, my cooking kit. This is a, a, a Trek Light UK made um, bag. So, what have I got in there? A 650ml Exarder mug, 650ml. Good versatile size. 
hook almost anything in that that you want for a single person. Um, I took this uh, spoon with me, it's a silicone spoon. It's good because you can scrape things out, you can stir things with it. It's long enough to stir your packs and things. Um, and it's good for cleaning out the pot afterwards because it's because it's silicone, it just sort of curves around the uh, inside and gets everything out. Um, I didn't use it a huge amount to be honest. More often than not, I was uh, eating bread, um, but um, but there were times when I did uh, cook other stuff, packets and things, and uh, it would make the pot a bit mucky, so that would be quite useful. Um, a spork, a titanium spork, very, very light. Um, I used that quite a lot, that was good. I had uh, an Opinel knife. I started off with an Opinel number six. Um, I actually lost it. Um, and, but I had found it a little bit on the small side, so I bought a, an Opinel number 8. They're brilliant, the Opinel knives. Uh, very sharp, very light, uh, very practical, um, but don't spike yourself on the end. Uh, on my number 6, before I took it, I actually ground the point off for safety's sake. And they lock as well. Got a little twist lock on it. Two cookers I took. Um, this is my little... Um, Chinese made BRS uh, titanium cooker, um, size of your thumb, it's tiny but incredibly effective. Um, it screws onto a, a Coleman style uh, gas cooker. Um, it's surprising how effective these are. I've had this one for uh, two years now nearly. Fantastic. Never had a problem with it. Um, and you can turn it right down to a simmer too. Because I was going to France and in the Pyrenees, they don't always have Coleman gas. Uh, which is a problem over there. They tend to have camping gas, um, easy click or the old uh, Pierce type uh, canisters. <clears throat> so what most people recommend is that you take um, a spirit burner. Um, I actually bought this Vargo one. Um, it's fairly expensive. It's about 28 quid or something. But it was about it's only 28 grams as well. It's very very light. Um, so it's a, it's a bit of a no-brainer. And it's got filled feet that you fold out and pot span that you fold out <clears throat> and you fill it with gas and it, it burns long enough to heat just about any meal um, if you if you if you cook up <clears throat> sorry if you boil up water in this 650 ml pot um, having filled this up uh, you'll still have some left in there some meths in there or, or alcoola brule they call it in france <clears throat> uh, but you can pour it back out and it pulls down the leg back into the into the pot. But the trouble with Alcula Brule is that uh, they only tend to sell it in one litre bottles. It's pretty heavy. Uh, and I started with one of those, and so I was glad to have this cooker with me. And I used it for about a week. <clears throat> and I got into the higher mountains and tried to cook up a, a coffee and breakfast in the morning. And uh, the, I couldn't light it. The Alcula Brule wouldn't light. Um, in the almost zero degrees temperatures. So the earliest opportunity, I, when I found a shop that sold Coleman gas, I dumped that and uh, bought some Coleman gas to use with this cooker. And then there was no problem. <coughs> I also have with me a mug, a 450ml mug. Um, to be honest, that wasn't essential. It's just a bit handy. If, you, if you've made something uh, like a breakfast, a cooked breakfast, I, I tend to take uh, quinoa porridge and um, I like that and so I, I'd cook that up in that pot and then I could make my coffee in this and you can actually put that on the stove of course because it's a titanium pot, very light and that's the lid for the 650ml pot, very very useful for keep it, either keeping things warm or for avoiding losing heat and wasting gas uh, when you're cooking <coughs> I use one of these lighters, just a striker, usual thing, and um, this is my can opener. I think Coughlin's make these, I'm not sure, but uh, it's just an, an old-fashioned army style can opener with a little bottle opener on the other end. Very light, very effective. <clears throat> I only used it once, I think, but uh, it's a good thing to have. Um, and I've, this was in my last review, I think. It's a titanium windshield, it's a bit noisy. If you've got other people camping around you, it's a bit embarrassing making a lot of noise with this. 
<coughs> so uh, a bit of aluminium foil is probably just as good. <coughs> what else is in here? My electrical kit. Again, a little Trek light Cuban fibre bag. Had a little Anchor 650, 65, 6,500 mAh hour um, battery charger thingy, which I could charge from my solar pack if it was working properly. Um, but I did, I did still charge it. Uh, it's got four little lights that tell you how much battery you've got left in there. Um, and on an average day, after it had gone wrong, that thing would charge it up one light. Um, whereas previously it would charge the whole thing up in a day. <clears throat> Some other things in here. Headphones I keep in there, little ear earphones for my phone. <clears throat> That's a little battery charger uh, for AAs and AAAs, um, which I took as a little USB charger um, for the batteries in my GPS. <clears throat> and then short leads, USB micro and a USB-C for my phone. And I had a long USB mini, uh, micro USB, which was for the solar charger. So I could actually have the uh, battery pack in the pocket and the solar charger on the back. <clears throat> That's my uh, just my international USB double adapter. Uh, that worked very, very well. And this thing is just a little tiny USB plug-in light. Superfluous, you might say. Weighed seven grams, that. And uh, I used that several times when I was in huts and places with other people and we wanted a general light. It gives off quite a bit of light when you plug it into the little battery pack. Brilliant. And they're available for, for just a couple of quid, I think, online, on eBay, or maybe on Amazon as well. <clears throat> My um, toiletries pack, again, another Cuban fibre bag from Track Light. Um, just toothpaste, toothbrush, and a comb, um, deodorant, some soap general purpose soap for washing my uh, kit uh, and me. A pair of scissors so I could trim my beard. I had these long thin scissors. That worked pretty well. Kept it kept it in reasonable trim. Um, and this is something a friend of mine bought me before I went on the trip. He said you might be needing something to look after your feet. Just foot cream. Um, and actually I, I thought oh, that's another 80 grams I've got to carry. But uh, to be honest, it was actually very good. And every time I stopped in a place uh, where I could be comfortable with a bed, then I would have my shower and uh, put that on my feet and just sit on the bed. And it was really nice. And it, it stopped the feet, my skin getting too dry under my feet and stopped the skin uh, going into funny shapes and, and causing rubbing on between the toes. So it was worth having. Right, my sleeping kit goes on the bottom. It's all in one bag. Um, this is actually uh, an X bed, um, an X bed bag, and it's one of their ultra sill, ultra lightweight bags. I think it's about 13 litres. I'm not sure, 10 or 13 litres, something like that. Um, what does it say? Do you know, it just is a UL. Um, and what I did was because I. For blowing up my sleeping mat, I didn't like the um, pump bag systems that came with the sleeping mat, or generally with the sleeping mats that I've had. So I made my own from this Ultrasil bag. Um, and I had an old pillow that had a, a nozzle on it, which seemed to be just about the right size for fitting to my sleeping bag. And I fitted that to it with some glue, cut a hole in, glued it in, and uh, it's worked very, very well for me. And it acts as a stuff sack for all my sleeping kit too. In here is <clears throat> this nice silk um, sleeping bag liner. That, that was used all the time I was away. I didn't wash it and uh, I still haven't washed it actually. But it still doesn't smell because silk is naturally antibacterial um, as is merino. That was really good. It's very light. This is under 100 grams. I think I bought this one from Black's. Fantastic. Very comfortable too. And it keeps your sleeping bag nice and uh, clean. And just gives you that extra layer of warmth. Keeps the drafts out. 
My sleeping bag uh, is, is not an ultra ultra light one, but it's a, a nice bag. It's a Marmot um, hydrogen. And the good thing about this is, I, is I've had I've had ultra light bags before that weigh about 500 grams, and they don't keep you as warm as you'd like. They don't give you enough air around the body. Um, they're very tight, so you can't turn over very very well. So they're just not very comfortable. I feel a bit sweaty and horrible. This one's got more space in it. Um, it weighs nearly 700 grams. I think 670 grams or something like that. Um, but it's got a good foot box in it, a three-quarter length zip, um, and the hood on it is fantastic because you can fit the pillow inside the hood as well and pull it over your head. Fantastic sleeping bag. Uh, and that was really comfortable and very warm. And it's 800 filled down. It's not the finest down, but it's it's a very nice bag. I'd recommend that. The pillow I was mentioning, I use, is the Sea to Summit. Eros, I think they call it, pillow. Um, this is the smaller one. Um, and, and it's brilliant. Worked fine. I, I was away nearly seven weeks doing that walk. And it worked perfectly. And this is my sleeping mat. Um, and uh, the next bed, I can't remember the model number I'm afraid, but I found that the combination of this and the pump bag I made is actually lighter than the uh, firmer rest. Um, what do they call their ultralight one, the yellow one? I can't remember, but it's. Um, this worked out lighter with that than the, than the Thermarest one. I wasn't that keen on the Thermarest one because I found it too slippery. Uh, it kept slipping away from under me and I found I was laying on my ground sheet a lot of the time. Um, that one has got uh, a bit more grip to it. It's a bit more comfortable from that respect. Okay. Valuables in. It's another little trek like um, bag uh, with a zip on it. And that was big enough for my passport and my spare money and any other little documents that were important. And that got this little clip on. I just clipped it onto the inside, the hydration bladder clip inside. And kept it safe so it couldn't slip out and be lost. Everything, oh no, not quite everything from inside. The thing that's in the bottom. So I made this travel bag from um, a rubble bag. Uh, and it's putting my rucksack in uh, at the airport so it can go through the uh, airport and conveyors everything without all the straps and all the bits hanging off catching not everything would fit right inside the pack um, and this weighed 90 grams um, and I could tie the top so I ended up carrying that <coughs> excuse me all the way uh, along the Pyrenees one guy that I uh, met uh, said that what he does is he uses cling film and uh, just, just buys some cling film at the supermarket before he comes back um, and wraps his pack in that, which is a good idea. Saves carrying something. Right, um, what else have I got in here? My raincoat. I think this is probably the, the latest and lightest uh, Berghaus um, Gore-Tex raincoat you can buy. Um, it's called the GR20. It's very light material um, but, it, but it's very waterproof. Um, kept me dry and very breathable too. Uh, what they've done is, is the new Gore-Tex is, is about half the thickness of the older Gore-Tex, the original stuff, and it's very it's still very waterproof and breathable. But what they've also done with this jacket is they've put little air vents in which don't let the water in because they're facing open downwards and uh, yeah very breathable very waterproof but not terribly good as a wind break in freezing cold wind because obviously wind can get up through those vents <coughs> but otherwise it's a very good very good um, jacket I'm very pleased with that and very light as well it's the lightest one I've had <coughs> I can't remember exactly how much it does weigh now I'm afraid and these are my previously I had a pack light and it's lighter than a pack light jacket and these are the pack light pants. I haven't found anything better than those. Waterproof, breathable, very effective. My wall is quite a lot in it, it's wet. And you can see they've got very mucky. I still haven't washed them. <coughs> uh, gaiters. 
trick mate. I think they are gators. <clears throat> Very effective. Uh, kept the uh, the Gore-Tex again. Kept the rain off and out of my boots. A little bit on the heavy side if you want to wear them just to keep grass seed out on in hot weather, walking hot weather. So um, I want, I'm looking at some very much lighter ones, like the Dirty Girl Gators or something like that. That's what I have. <coughs> Still a bit of rubbish, go that way. Always carry a very light carrier bag with me, so I can throw rubbish or something in there. A peg. <laughs> I found that was quite useful actually. For I'd, if I'd bought an item <coughs> of food in a bag and the bag needed sealing, sometimes just to make sure it doesn't all come out in the pack was quite handy to have that just to stick over. <coughs> Microfiber cloth, always handy. You can get a lighter one. This is just a cheapy supermarket, four for a quid, I think they were or something. Um, but that gets that got used an awful lot. I was using it for wiping down the tent inside. You had a lot of condensation in, in tents. Um, so in the morning before you pack up, it's nice to have something like that to, to wash it off with, screw it out. Um, but I also used it for washing me um, and drying things. And this is a Tyvek footprint that I made. Tyvek, I, 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 it was in my last review. It's like paper, but it's a, a plasticky kind of material, uh, which is waterproof, and they use it in housing. <clears throat> but it's very light, that, that weighs about 120 grams, I think, um, and it stops thorns and stuff going through your tent and piercing your mat. So in seven weeks, I didn't have any problems, because uh, I used that all the time. If you're wild camping, and you, ne you never know if there's a prickle or a prickly bit of wood or something underneath, so it's a good idea to have something like that. <clears throat> and you can just cut it to shape, it's about five quid on eBay. A sheet. Right, essential if you're doing the Pyrenees. I had these Z-Packs walking poles. Um, they're the lightest ones I could find. 200 grams each, I think they are, something silly. Uh, and they're, they're carbon. Uh, and they're quite long too, so they open out long enough to support the tent. I, my, my tent is a, a poleless design. Um, and you use one of these to support it in the middle, the plexamid. Um, and being adjustable, I could adjust the height of the tent if it was windy or not, um, which was good. But these are great because they've got the two handles are great. You can normally hold it there, but if, if the terrain changes a little bit and you're walking in a slight gully on where the footpath's worn in, um, you can just slip down. Or if you're walking on an incline, you can have one one there and one there and walk like that. Brilliant. Wouldn't have done the GR10 without those. They were fantastic. Uh, and they lasted very well. I mean, people do complain about breaking their poles and that. And imagine that, that something light like this would be too flimsy. I suppose I was very aware of that, so I was being as careful as possible. But the paths in the GR10 are pretty rough. Lots of rocks and stuff like that. And everything survived. Sun cream, just a small pack of sun cream, pack to 30. I, to be honest, after <laughs> after about a week, I stopped using sun cream because my skin had turned brown in the exposed bits, that is. This is my um, toiletries pack, a couple of emergency things. Made out of, I made this little bag out of Tyvek. It's pretty tough stuff, so you can sew it and do stuff with it. That was essential, I found. Um, Life Systems Ex Expedition Sensitive Insect Repellent. Uh, it's very light, and there are only occasions where I needed it. But when I got when I was camping one night near water and uh, a couple of other places where I was in a static position, uh, you get over, you know, on the Pyrenees. You don't get many things that, that, that bite you. I found, but but one thing that does is the horseflies, mouche de temps, they call them, and they're pigs. They really bite you, and they're following you all the time. The minute you stop, they're on you. And bite you. Um, so you can't, when you're walking, you can't use something like this. You just have to be aware of them. Um, but um, when you're stopped, that, that keeps them away. And when they have bitten you, it's useful to have something like that. That's just a little after bite pen, which uh, I found was, I think, I think I bought this in Greece <laughs> a year or so ago. And um, it, it works. It's just some ammonia based stuff. <clears throat> 
toilet paper. Just roll up around a, a lolly stick. That's good. Just pick up that wherever you can then. Um, and this was just a, a hand spray um, sanitizer. You can use gels, I suppose. And this was something I made just for digging a hole for um, doing number twos. Um, and to be honest, I, I think I only used that a couple of times because there's so, so many rocks and so much vegetation and stuff, and, and you can't actually dig most of the areas. So I hardly used that. Thankfully, it only weighs 18 grams, so it wasn't too much to carry. This was really useful. Again, this is a little uh, Sea to Summit um, Ultra Seal Nano Pack. That's a little um, rucksack. I think it's 18 litres or something, or 10 litres, is it? But that, that's a little rucksack that you can just pull out of a pack, weighs 30 grams. And I used this whenever I was in a town or something like that and I'd pitched my tent and I wanted to go to town and carry some stuff or get some shopping, I could take this and put it on your back, carry your bits and you didn't have to worry about having your bags, uh, your, your hands uh, occupied. Very good, 30 grams. Fantastic. People laughed at me on the trail because I, I always take my seat with me. It's 265 grams, a little tripod seat. Gets your bum off the ground and when you're at a camp you don't often find rocks and things. It's just on a bit of grass somewhere. Uh, if it's wet you can't sit on the ground anyway. So it's nice to have something like that to, to park your bottom on. Now, these are my shoes. If you're staying in refuges you don't need shoes because they provide them. But it's nice to have your own shoes, and I can just keep these on. I think they weigh about 220 grams, uh, and they're breathable, uh, and they've got good soles, so they're waterproof, um, and they, they cover your toes as well, unlike flip-flops and things. And I found they were really nice for camp shoes, that's what I wanted. <coughs> it's my other water bottle, so I had two one-litre bottles, uh, and my one bottle that was, that was 0.6 litres, that was my day-to-day -day drinking bottle. Right, we're getting there. This is my uh, water filter kit, so I can get water from virtually anywhere uh, where, where it existed. Um, and this is just the Sawyer mini filter kit. Brilliant. I've had this one for about three years, four years. Um, and uh, I wouldn't go wild camping anywhere without that. <coughs> My camera was in an Osprey bag. I actually took with me um, Zoomix um, TZ100 because it's got a good zoom range and wide angle on it. Um, but the only problem with this camera is the lens is a bit soft so um, you end up having to sharpen a lot of the images when they come back and when you get get back uh, and when you've got about a couple of thousand pictures or so it's uh, it's hard going so, um, <clears throat> so i'm going to probably change for a sony the newer sony ones and this so you saw my maps in the other plastic bag what I would do is decant those into this Ortlieb waterproof bag um, for the for the day, my days with the maps. Um, and this is fantastic. It's flexible. It's, it's quite a sort of sticky material, I suppose, but it's good because it's gripping. You don't have to keep gripping it all the time. It doesn't slip out of your hands. And its seal is very strong, so you're not going to get water in there at all, and it's not going to come apart on you. Then my side pocket, my hip pockets, <clears throat> just a lip salve, lip salve and tissues in one, and I sometimes keep a little treat, snack, whatever, in there. The other one has other stuff. Uh, I actually took a little spotting scope with me, a seven times spotting scope. I wouldn't bother again. It's, uh, I thought it might be useful for the wildlife, but to be honest, I didn't use it. 
head torch. I had this last time I did a review. This is a Nightcore um, head torch. It's, it's rechargeable. It's fantastic. It's got a red light on it. It's got low uh, white light and it's powerful white light. Uh, and it lasts for ages. It just keeps going. It's fantastic. Yeah. And I, I had a pen with me. I thought it might be useful if I'm taking any notes, but I didn't. So that was another thing I wouldn't bother taking again. One thing I managed to miss off of that video was this uh, little gadget, which is uh, my eTrex 30X GPS. Um, on there, I had open topo maps for the Pyrenees and France area, and uh, with contours, which is a really useful free access map, um, and you can download that offline. Um, put that on there with the GPX route files for the GR10 uh, and I found that really valuable. Um, there are lots of times where, although the marking is very good on the trail and you have a guidebook and you have maps and you have a compass, which is also something I had that which I didn't mention, um, this thing actually it was really useful just to, to verify whether I'd taken a wrong trail because you, when you walk along you suddenly find there aren't any markers and you think, oh, where did I go wrong? And you don't know, you can't remember where you went wrong. Um, and this thing just, just was it very easy to verify exactly where you are, very quick. So for the sake of 150 grams, um, it was worth having. Because I had a little sketchbook as well, and that weighed just over 100 grams, I think. It was just a pencil and a little pad. And I took, I did some sketches while I was away, because sometimes when you've got a bit of time to while away in a nice place, it's nice just to sit there and do something. Right, so that's all the stuff that adds up to 8.6 kilos. Um, it's, as a, as a total pack, you would say that's not ultra light, um, but it, it is ultra light kit um, and it's just not minimalist. I don't like going wild camping minimalist. I like to be comfortable and I don't mind carrying a bit of extra kit to be comfortable. So um, that's a personal choice, I guess. There's also some stuff in this bag that um, I took with me and I didn't need it, so I sent it back home after about a week. And um, in this bag, it was a, I had another Ortlieb map case, which I was going to use for the guide. Didn't need it. A one litre water bottle. I thought I might need some point if I needed extra water. But I didn't use that. Um, a beanie. I didn't need a beanie because I had two hoodies on my jackets and. Uh, I had the buff as well, so that was superfluous. And a pair of gloves. If it's really cold, I could need a pair of gloves, um, but they kind of got in the way and I didn't really need them that much. As it wasn't as cold as it could be. A scourer. Um, I took the um, straps off of my walking poles, because they just got in the way. I didn't like them, so I uh, didn't need them. A midge net, which I didn't need. Um, I didn't need any baskets on the walking poles either because the, uh, I didn't have snow. Uh, if you go earlier in the year or later in the year, you might get snow. It's worth taking them. You can even get snow in August, apparently. Um, a little magnifier I had in my uh, side pocket. Um, that was just in case I didn't want to get my glasses out and help me read a map, but it was bright enough to be able to read the map at all times. That was a container. I think I had some powdered milk in that. No, didn't use it. Um, and last of all, bits in here. A titanium frying pan. I thought as I'm in France, I might want to buy myself a bit of steak or something and fry it up. No, I mostly was eating bread and stuff, so. A little pair of light socks, which I didn't need. Glasses case and a sleeping mask. And that was it. All of that came to 500 grams, so uh, I take that with me at the beginning and uh, just sent it home. So got rid of that. So I think when I was walking, I was probably carrying 12, 13 kilos with the water and food, um, which is a lot lighter because of the stuff I've got that's ultra light. Um, a lot lighter than what other people are carrying. I saw a lot of other people carrying 18 to 20 kilo packs. Um, and that would be a bit of a killer for me on the kind of trails that we were walking on. It was uh, 50 kilometres up, 50 kilometres down and 950 kilometres of walking uh, on rough paths a lot of the time. 
Um, good walk, recommend it. Um, and I hope that this has been helpful to you um, in, in choosing any of your gear or selecting the kind of gear you want to take on a trip, particularly if you want to do a walk like the uh, GR10 across the Pyrenees. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.